on something on Wednesday night, and uh, it was like I, could, I just felt like God wanted me to preach this sermon and, and really to emphasize this right now and to come back and do a whole sermon on this subject because there's so much in the Bible about In Jeremiah 51, he says, the, the men that are within thee are become as women. They have forborne to fight. That's what it says in Jeremiah 51 about Babylon. He said, your men have become like women and they don't want to fight. Now look, this, is this a criticism of women? Absolutely, I love women. I'm not criticizing women at all. I'm not saying that men are better than women. I'm saying that men are fighters and women are not fighters. And if you're not a fighter and you're a man, then maybe you have feminine tendencies. Okay? <laughs> and so what I'm saying is, and look, I didn't write the Bible, okay? It's Jeremiah 51. They were born to fight because they're like women, he says. They don't want to fight. Here's what happened. What, what if we just, what if America decides we're never going to fight again for any reason? And we just tell everybody in the whole world, hey, listen, uh, you know, Iran, Iraq, Korea, China, whoever, we're never going to fight anybody again. We're getting rid of all of our weapons. We're not going to fight anymore. We're never going to fight another war. We're never going to pick up a gun again. You know what would happen the next day? <laughs> They'd all just come over and just take us over and kill us all. That's the truth. You know, you know what happens when there's peace? Because there has been total peace in the world before. It's when there's one dictator ruling over the entire world, then you have peace. Is that what you want? When you have no freedom, and you have Caesar, and then you have peace. Okay, that's called the Pax Romana, it lasts for 200 years. One day there's going to be total peace in the world. Once again, there's going to be one guy in charge, it's going to be called the Antichrist. And there won't be any more war. They'll put it, you know, there will be wars initially, and then all the wars will be gone, and they'll say peace and safety. But he's going to be chopping the heads off of Christians and forcing everyone to take the mark of the beast and worship the Antichrist. That's what peace is, my friend. Peace is slavery and dictatorship. But in order to have freedom, in order to have righteousness, in order to have the truth, there's going to be fighting. Period. And you can say, well, I don't like to fight. I don't want to fight. Whether you like to fight or not, you have to fight in order to win. Am I a soldier of the cross, a follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause or blush to speak his name? Shall I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease, while others fought to win the prize and sailed through bloody seas? Sure, I must fight if I'm to win. Increase my courage, Lord. I'll bail the cross, endure the pain, supported by thy word. And so... What does fighting have to do with being filled with the Holy Spirit? That's a good question. <laughs> but in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Turn to Colossians chapter 3, just two books toward the end of your Bible. You're in Colossians 3. Uh, you're in uh, Ephesians 5, turn to Colossians 3. Now, in Ephesians 5, we see this, uh, we want to talk about ways to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one way, Ephesians 5, is speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Is a good way. Singing the right music is a great way, great way to have it. Be filled with, oh, oh, listen to the right music. Should I buy some CDs? No. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Take this songbook with you and sing the, the hymns of God. Sing the praises of God. That's a good way to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How am I going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Look at, look at Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Here we see the admonition by God, exactly the same wording here as Ephesians 5.18, except instead of saying be filled with the Spirit, he substitutes let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Why? Because those two things are so closely related. That's why. Because in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God's going to have to dwell in you richly. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Be filled with the Word of God. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Sing these songs. I wonder what spirit you'll be filled with when you're singing all the world songs. I'm not saying you'll be demon-possessed, but what I'm saying is, you got, you, you're, you're singing the wrong spirit, my friend. The Bible says in, in uh, Psalm... Where does it say this? Uh, Psalm 22, verse 3. It says, Thou art holy, O Lord, that in, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. The Bible says God lives 
in his people's praises. I wonder who lives in the songs that come out of your CD player when you're listening to uh, Van Halen and Metallica. I wonder who lives there. I wonder what kind of evil devil spirits live in that kind of music. And so God says, you want to be filled with the Spirit? Sing these songs. Sing the songs of praise to God. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Hey, get this book in your heart. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why don't you memorize the verses that we're learning together as a church this, this, uh, these few months. 1 John 5, 1 through 13. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why don't you memorize 1 John 5, 1 through 13? Why don't you memorize chapters of the Bible? Why don't you memorize whole books of the Bible? You say, well, how much should I memorize? How much do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because the amount of Word of God dwelling in you richly with all wisdom is going to be a measure of how filled with the Holy Spirit you are. How filled with the Word of God are you? That's how filled with the Holy Spirit you're going to be. How filled with the Holy Spirit do you want to be? Well, how much, how much do you sing this kind of music versus listening to other garbage? You sing these songs, you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. How else? Look at Luke 11.13. Luke 11.13. This kind of ties in a little bit with the book of Acts, what we saw at the day of Pentecost. You see, some of you, I don't know, some people just need to stop and realize that it's important to build up yourselves in your most holy faith, is what Jude said. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourself in the love of God. Okay, man, I almost want to try. There's so much in this sermon. I've got to read this whole thing for you. Just, you, need to, you need to get this point. Stay where you are. I don't want to have you turn all over the Bible. Stay in Luke 11, but you've got to get this point, okay? Oh, we should just be out soul winning. We have too much fighting and fundamentalism. We don't have enough fighting and fundamentalism. I wish we'd get some more fighting because the liberals and the phonies and the freakos are taking over fundamentalism. We need more fighting. The last thing we need is less fighting when every fundamental Baptist church is, is filled with all this sissified, little wimpy, queer little music, the last thing we need is less fighting when the King James Bible is going out the window to the new King James and the new American Standard. The last thing we need is less fighting when door-to-door -door soul winning is going out the window. It's being replaced by handing out invitations, door hangers. Hang all your stupid door hangers. I'm going to go out soul winning. And the last thing we need is less fighting. We need more fighting. We need somebody to call all these bunch of liberals down on the carpet for preaching heresy and preaching lies and being a wimp and a pansy. But listen to this. Oh, it's just beyond so many. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves. Hang on every word. This is God's word. Listen to this. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. You can hang out all you want down in verse 23. We ought to just save people and pull them out of the fire. Amen. Praise the Lord. But why don't you go back to verse 20? Why don't you get the context? Why don't you build up yourself in your most holy faith? I've said this to many people. Some people have asked me, they said, how long do you spend preparing a sermon? And this is what I say to them. I say, you know what? It varies the amount of time I spend on a sermon, but I said, you know what I spend my time on during the week? More than preparing sermons, I prepare myself. It's more important to me. I spend a lot more time preparing myself than I spend preparing the sermon. My whole life could be built on this one verse. This should be, I mean, this should be my life verse. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I haven't attained. I'm not everything I'm supposed to be. But this should be my verse right here, Jude 20, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. You should be constantly building up yourself. You should be waxing strong in spirit. You should be growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then, then you're going to be effective when you go out soul winning. If you've built up yourself. Okay? And so you just say, go soul winning, go soul winning, go soul winning. I've heard people say, you'll have all eternity to study the Bible and to know the Bible. But you've got to go soul winning now. I want to know the Bible now and go soul winning now. Because I don't want to go out soul winning as a nincompoop. I don't want to go out soul winning in the flesh. Hey, the arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor and watching unto prayer. Where duty fail, calls or danger be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. But you better build yourself up. You better strengthen yourself. You better learn what you need to learn from the Bible. You better get on your face and beg God for his power. 
You better get the sin out of your life, and you better fight the good fight so that when you go out so winning, God can really use you with whatever time you have. You see, a boy brought five loaves and two fishes to, to God. 